Hey guys, welcome back. Today on The Untidy Artist, we're making soap. I am really excited about this tutorial. I will be showing you today how I make hot process soap. So if you're familiar with soap making, um, you'll understand a lot of what's going on in this. If you're new to soap making, before you try making soap, you'll want to make sure that you have a basic understanding of lye, which is also called sodium hydroxide. It's a very caustic substance, which can cause burns. It's very important that you do it in a room that is well ventilated. You have to use rubber gloves and goggles. There are just a lot of safety precautions you need to take. So if you've made soap before, then you'll, like I said, understand this. If not, make sure before you start making soap that you gain a basic understanding and knowledge of how to work with lye. I will include a whole bunch of basic soap making tutorials below that helped me in my soap making journey. Uh, the Soap Queen is an awesome resource for basic soap making. I will also include links to some books and just different places that I found really helpful and useful information when I was learning about how to work with lye and just all of the safety precautions I needed to take. So with that said, let's grab some supplies and make soap. Okay, the first thing you're going to need is some sodium hydroxide or lye. You can see right on the label it says to wear goggles, gloves, a mask, protective clothing, and to never add the water to the lye. You never wanna pour water directly into lye. You always want to pour the lye into the water. I found some lye at some, on some different soap making websites and I will include those links below. Also, I did have luck finding lye at my local Lowe's hardware store. You want to make sure that if you get lye from a hardware store that it is 100% lye. Um, it's also used as a drain cleaner, so they do sell it there. But a lot of the lye that they do sell at hardware stores such as Lowe's also contain a lot of other chemicals and you want to make sure that you're not getting one of those. So just make sure that you're using 100% lye. The next thing you'll need are your oils. I will be using canola oil, which is also known as rapeseed oil, coconut oil, and olive oil. I wanted this to be an easy recipe and use oils that you could get all at the grocery store. I will be um, adding the recipe for my soap below in the comments. Then you'll need a scale. This one is lovely. It measure, measures in ounces and grams, and you wanna be pretty exact when you're making soap. Then you'll need an immersion blender, and this is my immersion blender that needs to be cleaned a little bit, and it just makes life easier when you're stirring your soap. I've got my safety goggles and my gloves. Very, very important that you have those. I have some measuring cups, a spoon, and a spatula, and I only use these for soap making. Once they've touched lye, I don't use them in my kitchen. Then I have two little cups here for measuring out my fragrances. I have some water. You don't want to use tap water. Make sure that you're using water that's distilled or purified. I have a thermometer. This is actually a heat a gun that I can just aim right at my soap and it gives me my temperature. A good old fashioned candy thermometer works just beautifully. I found my um, thermometer that I use on Amazon and I can put that link below also. Then we're going to be using a milk carton today to pour our soap into. Like I said, this is a really, this is an easy, basic, if you're just starting out making soap recipe. And then I have some eucalyptus essential oil and some spearmint essential oil. I thought it would be fun to sprinkle a little bit of dried spearmint on the top of my soap and I have my recipe and I will put my link to where I figure out my re recipes below. I have a crock pot once again. I only use this for soap making and let's dive right in. So the first thing we're going to do is measure out our fragrance oils. And I'll be using 0.25 ounces of my eucalyptus and 0.25 ounces of my spearmint. Then I'm going to set my uh, crock pot to low and so it can start heating up and I'm going to measure out my oils. Now it's nice to use a scale that has ounces and grams because you want it to be very exact. So go ahead and measure out your coconut oil, melt it in the microwave and dump it right in your crock pot and then measure your other oils. And you can see I put my cup right on my uh, scale tear it or zero it out so that then when I add 
the oils into it, it gives me an exact amount without the weight of the cup. So once I have all three of my oils measured out and poured into my crock pot, I actually for this put a garbage bag down just to protect my table. I've got my gloves on, my safety goggles, and I'm going to measure out my lye. Now when you are making soap, you will learn that you need to be very careful with the amount of lye that you use because each oil requires a different amount of lye to help it turn into soap or what they like to call saponify. So then measure out your liquid and you can see I am adding my lye to my water. Never the other way around. Never ever add your water into a cup of lye. It will create a volcano explosion and it's not good. So slowly add your lye into your water and then gently stir it until it all dissolves and it's clear. Gently pour it right into your oils in your crock pot and then I kind of tap my immersion blender to get any air bubbles out and I start to stir it. Now what we're looking for is called trace. The easiest way to describe this is the oils and your lye and your water will mix together, they will get thicker and thicker, and they will emulsify, which means the oils and the water will blend together. And then it will get thicker and almost look like pudding. There are different types of trace. You can have thin trace, you can have medium trace, or thick trace, which looks like really, really thick pudding. With this, we want about a light to a medium trace. So what will happen is as I pull up my immersion blender, you can see as I drag a trail of the soap across the top of the soap that's still in my crock pot, it leaves a little line. That is called trace. So I brought my soap to trace. I'm going to keep my crock pot on low. I'm going to put the lid on, set my timer for 15 minutes, and then I'm just gonna wait. And you can see, I kind of stopped it here. Um, after about 10 minutes, you can see it's starting to bubble around the edges. And after a full 15 minutes, this is what it looks like. Some people don't stir their soap as they go. I stir my soap as I go. I don't want it to scorch and burn, and it's worked out for me perfectly. So if you feel otherwise, um, I would love to hear from you in the comments below, pros and cons to stirring or not stirring. But give it a really good stir and make sure that it's all just evenly being cooked. Scrape the edges, put the lid back on, and cook it for another 15 minutes. And after another 15 minutes, this is what it looks like, and I'm going to stir it again. You can see around the edges, it's starting to get clear, and it kind of looks like Vaseline. Um, it's starting to gel, which means the soap is starting to react with, or the oil is starting to react with the lye, and it's starting to turn into soap. So give it a stir, put the lid on again for another 15 minutes after I took my lid off. You can see it almost looks like it's separating, like the oil is mixing out of the soap. It's absolutely fine. Your soap is fine at this point. Once again, give it another stir, stir the oils back in so it's a nice fluid mixture. And you can see it's starting to get more and more clear. And then I put my lid on again for another 15 minutes. At this point, it's been about an hour. And you can see that my soap is starting to turn clear. I usually um, have had success cooking my soap for about an hour and 15 minutes to about an hour and a half. After about an hour, I take a little bit of soap, add some water into a little cup, stir it around, and then I actually have some pH testing strips. This is going to test the soap to make sure it's not too acidic or too alkaline. We want a nice balanced soap. soap. If it is too acidic or if the lye is still um, really apparent in the soap, it can burn your skin. So I just take my little testing strip, drop it in my water, and it gives me a reading that shows me my soap is nice and and complete. It's a nice balanced soap. You can see that this is very hot. I just measured it with my little heat gun and it's 171 degrees. We want it to cool down before we add our fragrance. You can add just good old, you can add fragrance oils that you can get at a lot of amazing different soap making websites. Um, I'm using essential oil in this. I 
can't even tell you how amazing this soap smells. The eucalyptus and the spearmint is just really refreshing. My husband loves using this soap in the morning. I took a whisk and blended my uh, my fragrance oil or my essential oil into my soap really well made sure it was completely blended and then I'm going to slowly scoop my soap into my little container which is just a milk carton and I love using milk cartons for hot process soap you can see I'm scooping it in and then tapping it against the counter to get all of the air bubbles out of the soap because if you don't, you'll get little air pockets in your soap and when you cut it, you'll have little holes in the soap. So I just scoop a little bit in and tap it as I go. And then um, once I have it all in the center, or all piled into my little milk carton, I kind of take my spatula and just press it down at the top and I'm going to add a little bit of these spearmint, dried spearmint leaves that I got from Penzi Spices, the best spice place in the world to get spices from. And I'm just kind of tapping it down with my little popsicle stick there. And now you just have to wait. So we're gonna let our soap cool. I grabbed a couple boxes. I wanted to keep the sides of the soap um, straight. If I just let, let it sit there, it would kind of bow out at the sides and I wanted it to stay nice and straight. After 24 hours, I came down the next day and I just peel off my soap carton. It's awesome because the soap carton is lined on the inside and it just makes a perfect mold for soap. Just peel that away and here is your awesome, awesome soap. It is so beautiful. Now with hot process soap, you can use your soap right away. So I grabbed a knife, measured out my soap into about one inch pieces and I'm just slicing my soap with a knife. Now the reason that you can use hot process soap right away is by cooking it in your crock pot, it's saponifying. The soap or the lye and the oils are um, working together and turning into soap. The heat helps that process go faster. Cold process soap is where you do the same process. You have the oils, you have your liquid and your lye, but then you mix it together and you have to let it sit for four to six weeks for it to finish turning into soap before it's safe to use. This is safe to use right after you finish making it. I actually like to let mine sit for about a week or two because it seems to harden up and last longer in my shower. But that's it guys, you are all set. You've made soap. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, I'm really excited about this tutorial. I have a lot of fun soap videos coming up. Um, so I would love to hear if you are interested in different types of soap videos. I would love to hear your feedback. Please check out some of my other tutorials. You can find those on my YouTube channel or at untidyartist.com. Give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. That would be awesome. And if you are one of my amazing subscribers, thank you so much for your support. We will see you guys next time.